This is Ubuntu 22.10, the most beautiful Linux distro based on GNOME 43. In this video, I'm going to show you to install Ubuntu 22.10 on M1 Mac using UTM. UTM is a powerful QEMU emulator that allows you to run Ubuntu inside a virtual machine on any Mac with Apple Silicon. Thanks to Apple's new virtualization framework that helps to run ARM64 OS on Apple Silicon at near native speeds. So without further ado, let's get into installing Ubuntu 22.10 on M1 Mac. Now keep in mind, we are running Ubuntu inside a virtual machine on Mac OS. Now as if you know, Asahi Linux is the only Linux distribution that runs on bare metal of Apple Silicon. For more information, check the description of the video. For demonstrating this video, I'm going to use the baseline MacBook Air with M1 chip. Now, as you can see, it runs the latest version of macOS Ventura. To install Ubuntu 22.10 on M1 or any Mac with Apple Silicon, you must reserve 40 GB of free space or more. Then head over to these links using a web browser. The first link in the description takes you to this page. Just go ahead, click on download, then choose ARM from the Ubuntu server section. From here, you can download Ubuntu 22.10 ARM64 edition. While it's downloading in the background, head over to the second link and click on download to get the latest version of UTM for your Mac. Now once it's downloaded, open Finder and choose Downloads. You will see the two files over here. Then double tap on the UTM DMG file and drag the icon to the Applications folder. Now open the UTM application. This is the user interface of the UTM application. Let's go ahead and start creating a new virtual machine for Ubuntu. To do so, click on this button. On the start menu, you will see two options, Virtualize and Emulate. If you are installing ARM64 OS on Apple Silicon, choose Virtualize to simulate the bare metal performance. If you are installing any Intel or AMD based operating system on Apple Silicon, use Emulation. So better use the OS that matches your computer architecture for faster performance. For now, choose Virtualize. Make sure to untick this option. Apple Virtualization only works with Mac OS for the time being. Then select Browse and import the Ubuntu image file. Then for the virtual hardware, allocate 4 gigs of RAM and set CPU cores to 4. Don't enable the hardware acceleration which doesn't work well with Ubuntu 22.10. If you want GPU based acceleration, use Ubuntu 22.04. Then click on continue. Now allocate the storage space for the Ubuntu virtual machine. Make sure it's not less than 30 GB. It's better to specify more storage space for the virtual machine, which will dynamically use to store the files on the Mac OS. Now under the shared directory, you can allow any Mac OS folder to be accessed inside Ubuntu. I'm going to allow the downloads folder. Then name the virtual machine and click on save. That's it, now we are done creating a virtual machine for Ubuntu. On the right, you can see the information about this virtual machine. Now it's time to start the virtual machine. Just go ahead and tap on the play button. Now choose to install the Ubuntu server. Now keep in mind that when you tap inside a virtual machine, the cursor control will be bounded to the guest OS. The release press control plus option to get control of the cursor back to the host OS. Now as you can see, it's booted into the install setup. Let me go ahead and jump into full screen mode. 
Before installing GNOME Desktop, we first complete installing the Ubuntu server. You can see the installer relies only on the keyboard. Just remember these keyboard shortcuts. You can use the up and down arrow keys for scrolling. The tab key helps in switching to the options. A spacebar can be used to select or unselect an item. The enter or written key is for final confirmation. Now select the language and press the written key. Then select the keyboard layout. You can use the tab key to select the layout option. I'm going to select English keyboard and highlight the done button with the tab key and press enter. Now choose the Ubuntu server which installs a set of packages that provide a comfortable experience. Now leave the network interface to default and click on done. For now, use a blank proxy address. Now choose the entire virtual disk and click on done. Now just press the tab key to jump between the options. Now keep in mind this won't erase anything inside a Mac OS. Then finish partitionizing the virtual disk. Now create a user account. Make sure you remember the username that you tap here, which is needed for logging into the Ubuntu server. You can also enable the SSH server if you want to connect to Ubuntu VM from Mac OS. Now these are the popular snap environments you can use on the Ubuntu server. For now, I'm going to choose Docker. Just highlight the option with the tab key and press the spacebar to tick the option and click on done. That's it. Now the installer will start installing the Ubuntu server. It may take around two to five minutes. So sit back, relax and grab some drinks. Once the installation is complete, exit the full screen mode and turn off the virtual machine. Then open the UTM, select the virtual machine, choose CD or DVD option and clear the image file. Now this will unmount the ISO which prevents the virtual machine from booting into the live setup. Now tap on the play button to start the virtual machine. Now this time it will boot into the Ubuntu server. For a moment you will see some warnings and errors. Just don't bother about it. Now wait for 10 to 20 seconds to see the login interface of Ubuntu. Now log in with your username and password and voila, you can see that Ubuntu 2210 is running inside a virtual machine on M1 Mac with Apple Silicon. It's time to set up a graphical user interface for Ubuntu. First off, go ahead and type this command to update the system. Then type sudo apt install ubuntu-desktop. This will install a GNOME desktop environment for the Ubuntu server. Sit back and relax. It may take a few minutes depending on the speed of your internet connection. Now once it's done, type sudo reboot. Now as you can see, Ubuntu is booted into GNOME Desktop. Now log in to the desktop environment using the username and password. For now, I'm going to stick to the VLAN session. If in case you're facing any issues with applications, you can fall back to the Xorg session. Voila, we are inside the Ubuntu desktop. The first thing to do after setting up the desktop environment is to install the VM tools. For that, open the terminal and type this command to install the support for directory sharing between guest OS and host OS.
Once it's done, reboot the virtual machine. Then from the menu bar, select UTM and choose settings. From here, choose invert scrolling and enable it. Now open Firefox and type this URL to access the shared directory. For some reason, this is not working. To fix this issue, we're going to rely on 9PFS, which is nothing but a Plan 9 file system that enables the I.O. communication between Ubuntu and Mac OS. To do so, open the terminal and create a folder inside a media named as Host Shared. You can name anything you want. Then head over to this page, look for the wordfs section and copy this command and paste it inside a terminal. Then replace this placeholder with the directory we created. Then copy this line of code, open the text editor and paste it here. Now again, replace this placeholder with the directory we created. Basically, what we did so far enables the file sharing service between Mac OS and Ubuntu. The line that you see here helps to mount the host OS directory automatically after rebooting. Now this way, you don't have to run the commands every time the virtual machine reboots. Then copy this line. Open the terminal, type sudo nano etc fs tab and paste it to the bottom. Once it's done, save the changes. Now set the ownership permission to this directory. Then open File Manager, choose Other Locations from the sidebar, and here you can see a new drive called Host Shared. Now these are the files present inside Mac OS. We have successfully established an I/O connection to the Mac OS folder inside Ubuntu. Now speaking about the performance, just look at the speed of Ubuntu, it's freaking fast. It feels like I'm running Ubuntu on bare metal and most of the things just work fine without any issues. The only issue for the time being is the GPU based acceleration. This way you will see choppy animations or transitions which doesn't impact the app's performance. But still the software rendering does a superb job and handles all the things like a charm. Now this method of installing Ubuntu enables flexibility for any Mac user to quickly get started working with the Linux operating system. Since Ubuntu runs inside a virtual machine or an isolated environment, it has nothing to do with Mac OS. Now this way, you can switch back and forth between Mac OS and Guest OS. And lastly, if in case you decide to remove Ubuntu, turn off the virtual machine, head over to the main UTM interface, Select the virtual machine from the sidebar, right click and choose to delete to remove the Ubuntu. That's pretty much it. This is how you properly install Ubuntu with GUI on any Mac with Apple Silic. Let me know what do you think about it in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching. This has been KSK Ryle. I will see you at the next one.